I'm on my own, broken and alone I feel the rain crashing down All around this empty town Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Glad you guys could join me here today. So we're gonna be starting something new here. So I'm gonna be starting a, uh, a quick, this is gonna be mostly short videos, but series on Artnet. Um, I'm gonna go through what Artnet is, why I use it for my, my DMX lighting and my, uh, my business lighting and stuff like that, why you should, and how to get into it without spending an absolute fortune. Um, so this first episode, we're gonna talk mostly about what Artnet is and why we use it. Um, the next episode, I'm gonna go through and we're gonna take apart my Artnet node because I, I have to do some work on it anyway, so it's a perfect opportunity. We'll go through my Artnet node and uh, what's up, what all is inside it and things like that. And then the third episode, we're gonna go through the actual installation of the OLA software, uh, which we'll get into, and uh, how to actually build one from scratch. So. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into what is Artnet. So, as we go along today, I'm going to have a lot of links in the description uh, referencing some articles online and referencing some material that will really help you through a lot of this. Um, like I said, this first episode is going to be mostly what Artnet is, why we use it, and how it can be beneficial for you as a DJ or you as a uh, production uh, designer of some sort, uh, why it can be useful to you. So Artnet is a ethernet protocol for transmitting lighting data, essentially DMX 512. So I know a lot of you guys are already familiar with what DMX is. So you know, DMX is the uh, protocol you use to take uh, a lighting controller and control lights, uh, DJ lights or architectural lights and things like that. So if you've seen a lot of my videos in the past, you know, we use DMX to control the entire light rig and and uh, give us the effects and things like that that we want. We usually use QLC Plus as the software, um, but you can use whatever software you want. You can use hardware controllers. You can, I mean, it, Artnet is not limited to typically uh, a software or something like that. So Artnet is an Ethernet protocol. I mentioned that when we first started. So what does that mean? So Artnet requires a Ethernet network to sit on. So, you know, Artnet is not its own Ethernet system or anything like that. It requires a standard, good old fashioned network um, to sit on and sit inside. So, for example, you know, in my house here, I have a wireless router. And then I have, you know, a phone, for example. My wireless router creates a wireless network that my phone connects to, and then they transmit data back and forth. Uh, that allows my phone to access the internet. Well, I have multiple devices here. I have a desktop computer. I have you know, all kinds of different stuff. So this wireless router creates a network that all of my devices can connect to. Each device can communicate to each other. And they all do it using a standardized protocol, which is the Ethernet, the TCP IP layer. So Artnet is... Uh, another way of communicating across this network on this network itself so you have to have a network so the first thing that we're gonna do is we need a network we have to create a network so when we go through my Artnet node in the second episode here we'll, we'll talk about what my network looks like and how it works but that's what's required you have to have a network you can create a, a network as simple as buying a $20 wireless router off of Amazon and then powering it up and then having two devices connected to it, either via the hardware connections on the back or via wirelessly. Either way, those devices are now on a network. With an IP address, typically, you know, if you buy just a home gamer router, it's gonna be like 192.168.1.1 1 .1 will be your router, and then your devices will start at like dot two and dot three. So there's your basic network. Um, once you have this network, then you can have devices on the network that are ArtNet compatible devices. So you typically you have a, uh, I'll use the word transmitter, which will be your console, your uh, there's lighting software of some sort. Uh, for our examples here, we're going to use QLC Plus because it's very easy to use. Um, and then you have to have a receiver, which will be your ArtNet node. So this ArtNet node is what's going to take in this Ethernet data from your controller that has been sent across the network and then convert it into actual DMX 512. 
using a dongle or using uh, another sort of uh, system either in built baked inside it or separately via USB or something like that. So those are your two components and pieces and you know, I'll show you a little hand-drawn diagram here of, of what we mean by that. But yeah, you have two components. You have your your transmitter, your origin of the dia, of the dia, of the lighting information that's going to be sent over ArtNet, and it's sent via the ArtNet protocol to an ArtNet node, which consumes that data and then transmutes it into something else, which in our case is DMX five twelve. It's going to head directly to our lighting fixtures to be controlled. So, what are the biggest advantages of ArtNet over you know just using a good old fashioned DMX cable you know running from a dongle on a laptop to your lighting rig. Well, there's a couple different things here. Number one, the biggest thing that I use it for is wireless. A lot of times we'll get to a venue, and uh, as you guys know, I have the Xair Behringer system. Um, wireless is a big thing for me. Um, I like to be able to put a front of house position basically anywhere in a venue. And being a mobile DJ and you know doing small production gigs and stuff like that, it is very handy to not have to run hard lines from the stage or from the performance area back to a front of house position. Um, while you know, normally it's not that big a deal, and if we were doing something other than the size of productions that we're doing, um, there would be a case made for hard wiring things. But you know the level of stuff that we do. Um, is not you know massive we, you know, we don't have 6,000 people there we don't have you know 400,000 lights stuff like that we have one universe typically no more than one universe of uh, lighting um, and then you know, our audio is just an X-Air mixer so it's not like you know we have some big high profile and uh, mission critical things that we're trying to do over this uh, thing so we use wireless um, that way we can set a table up in the back of the room um, as long as we got power back there I can set up a, a couple computers and I can have my ArtNet node that has a wireless router built into it and then just connect to that wireless and then I'm part of the network. You know, I don't have to have any hard wires ran in between. We have the option of running a hard wire in between and we'll get into that when we get into the build, but we don't run it uh, at least right off. Uh, we, we always try to use wireless because it, it's convenient. You know, we password protect the wireless so not everybody can access it, um, but it, it's very convenient. Two. Um, Ethernet cable is really cheap. So I don't know if you guys have priced like a box of a thousand foot of Ethernet cable or you have priced um, a box of DMX cable. Uh, not my cable, but actual DMX cable. There's a difference in price. Um, I'll look up the prices here. I don't have the prices right offhand, but Ethernet cable is cheap. You can get it a lot of places. You can go down to Lowe's and buy a thousand foot spool of Ethernet cable. So if you're doing you know, an instance where uh, you have an ArtNet node and you have a front of house position and you do need to run an Ethernet cable between them, it's a lot cheaper than running a you know, DMX, DMX line. Now, that also brings us to a, a quick disadvantage, which is DMX cable. You can run DMX longer, longer distances farther than you can run Ethernet cable without signal degradation. Uh, obviously, there's a lot more data flowing over an Ethernet cable than a... Uh, DMX cable, but just as one of the examples, that is a disadvantage. So, where you can only run 100 meters of uh, Ethernet cable, which is your standard Cat5, Cat6, 100 meters is about it before you start losing speed. Um, you can run 300 meters of DMX without any kind of loss, typically any loss of uh, signal. So, eh, you yeah, pick your pick your poison on that one. Um, Ethernet. Uh, well, one of the other big things is if you run a multi-universe situation. You know, if you didn't have a front of house position, you would have to run one DMX cable from the front of house position to each uni for each universe heading to the stage. So say you have a, a, a stage rig with five universes. Say you do a lot of LED panels or things like that. You have five universes. That's five DMX cables having to run from front of house to the stage. Yes, you can do it with a snake and things like that, but it's kind of expensive. Um, with DM with the ArtNet, you run one Ethernet cable. So with your standard 100 meg network, you can run, I think, somewhere around 400 universes across a standard 100 meg network. If you're in gigabit, you can run even more. So 400 universes is obviously a lot. So if you have like a four universe ArtNet node or something like that, and you need to run more than one universe, you know, you can either do that wirelessly, um, as long as your connection's good, or um, you can run one single Cat5 cable, and you're done. You don't have to run a bunch of uh, bunch of DMX lines. 
So if you're doing architectural lighting, uh, where that comes into play is uh, if your building already has you know Ethernet or uh, networks already built into or baked into it, you know in the walls and things like that. Um, architectural lighting it can be very advantageous to use an existing network uh, with a one-to-one -one on the art net and then uh, you know, leverage your existing network uh, to transmit your DMX data. Um, and like I said, the other big thing is the wireless capability. Um, you can even use, like, if you're doing architectural things like that, you need to send your DMX data a long way. You can use those dishes and stuff like that, ubiquity dishes, to send the Ethernet, you know, through the air wirelessly. Um, and those work great as long as they ad adhere to the standard networking protocols. Artnet will work just fine across it. So as I said, Artnet is not the same as Ethernet, and it is not the same as DMX. Artnet is its own protocol that carries DMX over an Ethernet network. So in addition to all the benefits and cons that I mentioned before, um, Artnet, like I said, handles multi -universe, multiple universes at once, uh, which can be very handy. But at the same time, you, know, you can have a single network with multiple Artnet nodes, so receivers, and you can have a network with multiple Artnet transmitters. Now, that sounds very complex, but I'm sure you've probably seen at big concerts and stuff like that where they have multiple lighting desks set up for the same rig and wonder how they do that. Well, that's they're using most likely using Artnet for that. And what they've done is they have hooked both of those lighting consoles up to that same network. And then on the node end of things where the DMX is, uh, or the Artnet is received and then turned into DMX, that is configured to... Uh, take one of those two consoles as the master, maybe the other one as a slave. So if all of a sudden no data starts coming from the master, all data will be accepted from the slave. Uh, and there's also things like Artnet merging and uh, you know, latest takes precedence uh, on the node side dealing with multiple transmissions of Artnet. But that's a little more complex and we just won't get into that. But that's that's a basic idea of how of what's going on there. So, you know, will DM or will Artnet replace you know, DMX? Well, no, because they are completely independent. And uh, you, know, you have Artnet, and then you have DMX, and they require each other to work. So, that's a basic idea of what Artnet is and how we use it. Um, you know, it's, it's not that complicated. It, it, it can be if you, if you try to tear it apart too far. Um, you know, when it comes to the actual building of, of stuff and usage and stuff like that, uh, that can get a little complicated, not used to, I'm sorry, when it comes to building the, the nodes and things like that, if you want to do it yourself, uh, you can go out right now and buy a, you know, a, uh, a HOG4 or a, uh, a Shamsis board, something like that. It's got Artnet baked in. You plug an Ethernet cable into it and you go and you buy a Artnet node off of Amazon, a uh, four universe Artnet node by uh, Blizzard. You can plug those two things together uh, with a router in between as, as the thing. And sometimes you don't even need the router. They have built-in routers into them. Um, you plug an Ethernet cable between them, and then, hey, you're using Artnet. You know, when it comes down to the actual usage of it, it's not that complicated uh, because, in all honesty, it's plug-and-play. So now, why do I use it? And I've explained some of the reasons already of why I use Artnet for my business. Um, one of the reasons is dealing with uh, like DMX dongles and stuff like that can be problematic. Um, I've ran into this before. So using QLC Plus and using like, uh, what are the Intec DMX open? So we use the Intec Open DMX dongles is what we use. And I had, you know, a laptop and it was running uh, Q QLC Plus. I think I was running it on Windows at the time. I had. Windows running QLC Plus, which is a normal normal thing. I had this Open DMX dongle plugged into it, and the laptop had some sort of power saving uh, mode that the D that the USB ports went into, and I discovered it later on. But it was a huge hassle. But what would happen is if I wasn't using the software, like we were at like dinner during a wedding, the all of a sudden the lights, whatever they were doing, would just freeze. So if I had them just like on a static color or something like that, you know, I wouldn't know that they have been they have frozen. And what was happening is the USB port was going into like a sleep mode or a power save mode, and the dongle itself was just locking up. And so whatever it was outputting at the time is what stayed. So like I'd go to start you know a first dance, and my lights wouldn't change. They were just stuck where they were at. So that was a big deal. Um, 
So I had a problem with that. So I had to go in and change the USB ports. I tried different laptops, you know, and, and some did it, some didn't. Um, I've ran QLC Plus on Linux, and uh, you know, I didn't want to spend didn't want to spend a ton of money on buying, you know, a, a five hundred dollar uh, dongle for like uh, what's the the Chave Show Express. Um, I didn't want to buy like a five hundred dollar one of those. Uh, not to say I was being cheap, but I was being a little cheap because I didn't know how useful this stuff was going to be because I was still learning and, and trying to figure out what I wanted uh, as my business was getting started. I wanted to figure out, I wanted to do this the best I could for the best price that I could. So I was like, well, man, I can get these dongles for like 75 bucks. Everybody says they work great, you know. So that's why I went, went and started working with that. So the dongles, they work just fine and you'll find out that I am still using them in the ArtNet node. Um, but I'm not worrying about like having to have Windows drivers for them. Um, I'm not worrying about if my laptop, if it you know has a problem, I don't want to have to worry about grabbing another laptop and hoping that the drivers are on it or having the drivers installed and stuff like that. Um, or if somebody wants to borrow my stuff, you know I have other DJs that that work with me. I don't want to have to make sure that they have all the stuff they need on their computer and things like that. Uh, it was just a hassle dealing with the dongles and then losing a dongle and then the USB cable, you know, was it okay getting plugged and unplugged back in all the time and stuff like that. So, you know, that was the uh, one of the, the things I didn't like about doing DMX before. Um, I liked the flexibility of using the software and I really wanted to use the software because it was what I wanted, what I, I, I envisioned in my head and I could get what I envisioned in my head to the lights via that. Hardware controllers, I didn't have that option, you know, we're very limited on hardware controllers for DMX. So, I wanted to go that route, didn't like the USB, and so I was like, I need a better solution for controlling my lights, and then I, I want a solution where I can wirelessly control my lights. Now there are some wireless DMX things out there um, that will originate DMX natively and then send it wirelessly to lights either via dongles or something else. And I was like, okay, that's an option, you know, but it's not very flexible. You know, I, I still want the full power of my software and the full power of my lights and everything in between, yet I just want to get the data from my source to my destination wirelessly. How can I do that? So then I discovered some, you know, what if I push put QLC Plus, put it into web mode, and then connect to the web interface and control it via the web interface? Well, yeah, that worked. Um, but the web interface is pretty limited, and it didn't give me really what I wanted. Um, so that lot led me to discovering ArtNet and discovering how to build my own ArtNet node uh, that didn't cost me a, an absolute fortune. Build my own ArtNet node and then have everything that I wanted right here. And then you know, with this ArtNet node, anybody who has any software that's ArtNet compatible can use this node and can use whatever is connected to the node on the DMX side uh, for lighting. So I, I could even rent this this DMX or this uh, ArtNet node out to somebody as an ArtNet node. You know, it's it's pretty simple. There's not much to it. So um, anyway, that's enough for this episode. That's what ArtNet is. Catch me on the next episode, and we'll actually open up my ArtNet node, see what's inside it, how it's built, and then the third episode we're gonna go through and we'll go and build one ourselves. We'll start from scratch. I, I need to do some work on this one, so it's a good time to actually start from scratch and and build it fresh. So. Stay tuned. I want to see you guys in the next episode.